who is done first, who has like translated the entire book into French with just these two books, um, can then start the game. Hey everyone, this is Attackers, and today I'm going to show you my preview for Territory Tribes at War. Um, this is a strategic movement-based card game where ancient tribes battle for the fate of their world. So um, it's a two-player um, card game similar to like trading card games, right? And where you battle each other, but it is movement-based. Um, it is like the spatial element is important and it has some quite interesting ideas. So I'd like to show that to you today. All right. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let's go. All right, very good. So um, the video will be structured as follows today. Um, first, I will show you like how to set up and play the game. And just give you a rough overview. I will not play an entire game because, well, this is not a solo game, so I cannot do a whole solo playthrough, but I will just show you like the gist of the game and then I will tell you what I think about it. All right, so first, when we open this box here, um, we do have like the phases sheet here. Um, I'll just put that aside for now. And then we have like all of all kinds of things in here. So you see everything fits in the box, which is pretty cool. Um, first of all, we have these play mats here. Um, and what we do is we can just put all of this aside for now. And then we can just uh, take the play mat here, one of the play mats, and put it here like this pretty much. And then we also have the second play mat here, right? Um, for the other player. And I will just put that above here. You will not see it now, but I will adjust the camera during the game um, in such a way that you will actually be able to see uh, everything that you need to see. So there we go. I think that works well. All right. Um, and then for the setup, um, I have already separated everything the way I need to. So you see, we have like lots of cards here, right? Um, these, these cards here are already sorted into two decks. Uh, so let me just show you. Like I've already two decks uh, pre-sorted here. I will talk about that a little bit later, but um, in the rule book, you can see that there are sample deck lists here for the pack, the machine, the dacers and the underlings, right? These four decks. And I have um, I have the two uh, decks here for the pack and the machine. Um, this is the machine and this is the pack, as far as I know. Um, so they these can now face off against one another. Um, you can also like build the other uh, two decks or the underlings and the pack, like whatever combination you want to. There are enough cards in here to build like two of these decks always, but you can also just uh, free build your deck any way you want to, right? Um, I don't have enough experience to do so yet, right? Um, that's why I just took these two pre-made decks, so to speak, right? And then what we do, um, the, the rest we don't need. We can put that aside. And then um, the deck consists of several things. So first of all, like this deck here, uh, you need to have at least 60 cards. And there is like, um, there is a suggestion in the book, like how many uh, champions should you should have, how many spells and whatever, right? And also you have five to seven territory cards. This is a different deck. So what we do is um, we shuffle this deck here, right? Let me just give that a quick shuffle because it is already shuffled quite well, I would say. Um, and it's just, I just want to like give you like the gist of the game. So there we go. And then we put that deck right next to the play area right here. So you can kind of see it like half off screen, but I think that works. And then also these territory decks, you can shuffle them, but you don't really need to because you choose the territories you want to use and you put them right below here, right? So, um, you can see that you will put it here like this, right? So, and you'd also do the other thing for the other player. Um, so you will just uh, also shuffle these cards and then put them for the other player up there. So let me just quickly do that. So, and then uh, last but not least, um, we do have dice here. These are just uh, used as counters for pretty much like everything. Um, so we can just put these um, right next to the play area here. Um, you don't really need to see them now, that's fine. Uh, let me just put them maybe down here. And then we also have like status tokens. And these as well, we will just take all of them and we'll just put them right next to the play area, right? Just so that we have easy access to them. That is already it. All right, so um, that is almost the setup. Then every player takes their uh, takes their territories and chooses one they want to play face down on their territory. But first, let me kind of show you what you see here. And um, you see the same thing also for the other player. Um, I will um, move the camera up in just a moment so you can see like um, the most important area for each of them. But 
what do we see here? Well, we have three spots here for territories. Um, in the first turn, everybody plays territory down and then place them face up after that. In the third turn, everybody plays a territory here. And in the fifth turn, everybody plays a territory here. You can see that down here in the turn thing. So you see like in the first, third and fifth turn, you play your territories down, right? And this is like the food, uh, the food um, the territories provide. I will get to that a little bit later. Then also here we can play relics, right? And this relic is then connected to these two territories and this one to these two. And also here we can play champions. I will get to that in just a moment. For each territory, you can play up to three champions altogether, but you need to pay the food costs. Then here we put our spell power. So if we have spell power, we put it down here. And with that, we can play spells as well, right? So we have champion cards, relics, territories, and spells that are just uh, usually you put them either you put them on a territory or a champion to like make them stronger or whatever, or to play some kind of traps, or you could just play them once and then you discard them, right? And you have spell power here. The cool thing is these are double sided. So here you have one, here you have two spell power. So if you use one, you can just turn it over without having to exchange um, more tokens. That is actually pretty cool and pretty well done. And then down here, we have a discard pile. Right, and here, as I said, we have like the turn overview, and also we have like the food um, that is provided each turn. Um, I will get to that a little bit later. So what we do at the beginning, we just take one of these, uh, one of these territories, place it face down, um, and the other player will do that. Um, will do that as well, so that it looks like this, right? So that is um, how you would uh, set up the game, pretty much, right? Um, so you will not always be able to see everything here just because um, this is like pretty much like square here, right? And the camera angle is just, uh, it's just 16 to 9. So um, if I put it out even more, you will hardly see anything. So I will do it like this. I will just like position the camera in such a way that you always see like what is important at the moment. Then what everybody else, what everybody also does, a real player just uh, draws 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from the main deck here, right? Um, and now what everybody can player can do is do a mulligan that you might know that from other games That means I can just choose as many cards as I want to for example I have almost no champions in here you see that with the uh, for these with the small symbol here, right? Like this uh, helmet means like um, I have uh, there's a champion I only have two and I have like all spells here. These are all spells. That is great You can also work with spells, but wow that is a lot. So um, let me just take a few cards that aren't uh, amazing. This one, for example, and this one is fine. This one could be good. This one I will um, put away. Okay, so what I can do now, I can choose as many cards as I want to, right? And can draw as many cards from the deck now to get them into my hand. And I have a champion, that is fine. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one. That's a nice one to start with. And the other cards I would just put at the bottom of the deck again, like just like that, right? Um, and the other player can do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, draw ten cards. Um, and then also like do a mulligan if they want to, but this player will choose not to do a mulligan. Actually, they are, oh, this player actually has a relic, so I can show you how that works. All right. So, and that is pretty much the setup. Now you need to determine the starting player. There are different methods to do that. First of all, you can just roll a die and whoever has the higher number can start the game. Um, that is how it is described in the rule book, but there are also other methods you can use. And I have a really good method you can actually use to uh, determine the starting player. Um, so each of you takes the identical book, uh, preferably something with like 700 pages or more. Gone with the Wind is a very good example for that. Each of you takes a dictionary um, for French and then you just translate the entire book into French. Who is done first, who has like translated the entire book into French with just these two books, um, can then start the game. So, and with that, you all can also just learn a little bit. I mean, we always want to learn and become better, right? And with that, you can brush up on your French skills. I think that is very good. And after you have determined your starting player, you can start. Let's just say that I am the starting player. Then we both turn around our territory. So, and now we have different phases. And as I showed you, we have like this really cool phase sheet here. Um, this is just a prototype, right? Um, it will um, be made even nicer um, for the production copy. But here you see like what you can do, right? So um, in the first phase, you always like have the beginning phase, and that means you always draw draw a card, right? 
take that into your hand. If you have at this point 12 and uh, more than 12 cards in your hand, you need to discard some, right? And also we usually would gain two spell power, but the first player in the first turn will not get any spell power. Otherwise it would be a little bit too unfair. That means we will not be able to play any spells in our first turn. So let me just all put them to the back. What I usually also like to do is sort these uh, heroes here by hunger because there's several things you can see here on, uh, on the card. We have health and Armor. Also, we have like a specific power that we can use at specific um, points in the game, depending on what kind of power it is. In the middle, we have the attack, the damage it does. So that's four, uh, four damage. Then here we have the the like this meat thing is like the food cost. The the star is how many points the opponent gets when this one is destroyed. And then also we have like movement and range. Um, I will get to that a little bit later. So, and in the first, um, also like on the, our territories, we see like how much food we get. First we get two, then later three, and then five food. Also there's five stars for um, points when it's destroyed. Um, at the moment, we are at two food, the first one. Next time it's our turn, we push that up here like one line and then we know all right we are in the second phase of that territory so to speak and then we and uh, this one generates three food and that is important because now we generate two food and now we can play as many champions as we can um with like having the two food here right so for example i have two champions here that uh, require one food each so i could play these two but only wherever wherever i have a territory right so what i would do now is uh play this these two champions here and now I know, okay, I have used the two food that I have for this round. That is already it. But these come into play exhausted um, because uh, we have just played them, right? And there's like this cool red line here. That means you can just, um, instead of like tapping them like in other games, because that would just take too much space, you can just uh, slide them down to this red line. Then you know, okay, these are exhausted at the moment. Exhausted means they will not be able to attack and move this turn, right? But they will be able to defend at least, right? That is possible all right so um and what i can also do in my action phase instead of uh, just playing heroes i could also cast spells you see down here spells always like give you something that you can do then right there's specific kinds of spells but this one here for example costs then two spell power and then you can do whatever it says here right like deal two damage to an opponent the champion and that champion cannot attack and move on its next turn that is pretty strong right but i don't have any spell power because well i wasn't i'm the first player so i wasn't able to get any um, then I have the combat phase, so now I could attack with my heroes. And how attacking works, I will show you in a moment, next turn, because I cannot attack. Why? Well, these are exhausted. So I'm not able to attack, so I'm just going to skip the combat phase. And then we have the second action phase, which is the same thing as the first action phase. That means I can just play cards or move champions, use active abilities, things like that, right? But I can't uh, use any of that. And then we have like the end of turn phase, where we just um, resolve like any poison damage we have, things like that. And that's already turned, so really, really quick, actually. But the next thing will be more interesting because you will have the other player now. And for the other player, it's more interesting now because first of all, um, we draw a card, and now we also receive two spell power. I will put them um, just here so you can see them, that we have two spell power, right? That would be down there, but I want to show you like a little bit like a little bit more of the playing area. So um, we have these cards here as well. Um, as I said, I usually like to sort them a little bit. Um, then I have like the champions here, then I'll put the relics there and then the spells at the very end, just so that we um, have that sorted. And also um, sort them by food cost like this. So um, this is our first turn, right? So we have two food here from our territory. So we can play um, up to two food. You see, we have uh, four champions here. Three of them cost two food each, so we can only play one champion, right? Um, so let's see, this one here has seven health. We have this, this one twice and does four damage. This one has seven health, does four damage as well. So they're pretty much the same. The difference is the, uh, it's like the ability here. Uh, prevent an opponent champions worth two or fewer points that occupies the territory across from this champion from defending this turn. That could be good for later if we can survive, right? That is like one thing, but I think we will be able to do so. So let's just play this one here. This one is exhausted, so we will also put that at the red line. You just can't see it right now. Just trust me. And then also we have like relics here and stuff, right? Relics, we can always like play adjacent to territories, right? Right here where, these, where you see these vases. And um, this one here would say spell cast, a champion you control with one food requirement gains swiftness. That's fine. We don't have such a hero. Spell cast, draw a card. So every time we um, we cast a spell, we can draw a card. That's also nice, but nothing too special. But I mean, it wouldn't really... Yeah, I think it 
doesn't really, I think it's no, no harm in playing this. And then also um, we can play spells, right? So um, let's now go to the combat phase first, um, but we cannot attack because we are still exhausted here, right? So that won't work. Um, but what we can do is we can play a few spells maybe. So this one is pretty nice. Deal three damage to an opponent's champion. Um, if the champion is destroyed, then you may heal a champion that you control for three hit points. That is important for later. I think we can use that, right? Um, deal two damage to an opponent's champion. The champion cannot defend this turn. Also not too bad. Destroy a relic, but you gain no points from it. So you can just destroy an opponent's relic. Okay. Destroy an opponent's champion worth one or two points that has damage on it. That is also nice. And discard two cards, you may search your deck for two non-champion cards. All right, so you see, um, there are some quite good spells here, but I will not play any of them yet. Um, I will want for my opponent to attack first. So I will not do anything in the combat phase. I will not do anything in the second action phase. And then we have the end of the turn again. So it is off to the next player again. And as usual, what we do is we do like the uh, beginning of round stuff. First of all, our champions are not exhausted anymore. Now we can attack, which is great. Also, this goes up one. That means um, now I this generates three food. Then also we draw a card. Let me just do that. That is another spell. That's a hidden spell, right? Um, that's a spell that you can um, that you can play hidden on a territory, and then whenever that territory, whenever like the trigger, uh, the trigger triggers here, then you can activate that spell. And the interesting thing is you don't need to pay for the spell now you need to pay for it then when it activates when you want to activate it right so that's pretty interesting and also this time we gain two spell power that is good let me just put that uh, here to the side so you so you know that i have it okay so um now we have our first action phase again so we can now play heroes again we have three food here but we need to pay this food for a hero that we play before we play here right so i can't just play it anywhere else and they obviously need to play it to a territory Three food, this one costs two, this one costs five. So we cannot pay for this one here. This one is very, very expensive, right? Um, I, but I could play it next turn when this goes up one more because then it distributes five food. This one here, Relic Defender, discard. This champion gains plus two armor and spell immunity until the beginning of your next turn. That is very cool. Seven health is quite good. So we will play the champion right here. You can always play up to three champions to, um, to a territory, but this one is still exhausted. So we Put it, push it down. Now we have our first combat phase that we can actually use. And so what we do is the combat phase is really interesting because we never attack heroes. We always attack territories. So I would now say, okay, these two now can attack this territory here. There are also heroes that have like a range of more than zero. These are all of zero. So these are all, uh, these are all like um, me melee fighters, right? But there are heroes that can actually attack for a range and that means then they could also attack a territory adjacent to that right so let's say this one had a range of one then i could also attack this territory if there was one or this right um if i had the champion here with a range of one i could attack this territory and this territory if this hero had if this champion had a range of two i could attack this one this one and this one, like all of them, right? So that is how range works. And that's why also the movement here is important, right? Because um, as I said, you can, uh, like in the in the action phase, you can also move champions. So I can just move her over there and then attack. That is also possible, right? So that is kind of how that works. All right, so this one is still, um, this one is still exhausted, but with these two, I can attack. And you see, these do two and four damage. And now there are possibilities. Um, now the opponent needs to think, okay, what am I going to do? Because with these two, I'm now attacking this territory. I would do six damage. So I would start with attacking with this uh, one first, probably, right? So um, now I would do two damage. And now the opponent can think, okay, either I let the damage go through. Then from, um, then first of all, you see here, this territory has two armor. So it wouldn't really matter, right? Because two damage are blocked. It would do zero damage. So I would do nothing. That's fine. So this Champion actually cannot do a whole lot for this territory because that is a pretty, um, has one one with a very good defense. Then I'm going to attack with the next one. Four damage, right? Um, this one has two armor, so I would go through with two damage. But I can do something else now. I can now take a champion associated with this territory that is being attacked and defend, right? This one is exhausted, yes, but def I can still defend, right? And that means now you see here, defense zero, but seven health. So that means I would take a die and put the two damage on this hero. 
So this damage, uh, this hero has now defended the territory and has received two damage. And these have attacked, so these are done, right? So I will just um, exhaust them. And that is how combat works. So that means you always attack territories or relics. I could have also attacked that relic here. And then you can defend with the champion associated with either the territory or even the relic here, right? Um, so that is how combat works. Actually, pretty simple. Now for this player down here, I could still, uh, like after the combat phase, do the second action phase and play more heroes, but I don't have anything to play, so I will just leave it. And then it's the other player's turn again here. So again, we will draw a card. We will gain two spell power. And now we have our first action phase. We have another spell here. Okay, so now I want to do. Now I want to play a few spells, right? Um, so what I want to do is, um, you see here, I have here the three damage on the opponent's champion. Um, but we need to destroy the champion to really do some to like also heal our champion. And now we can really like play with these spells. That's pretty cool. So for example, one one thing that we could do is that um, I play this one here i did i play this one here deal two damage to an opponent's champion that cost me two spell power all right we'll do that so i will spend two of my spell power right and then play um this relic here and discard it two damage to an opponent champions i will take this champion right here right this one here and just deal two damage to it. also this one cannot defend this turn if that's necessary but that's fine i discard this and then I will also play this spell here. This costs only one, so we spend one spell power. Deal three damage to an opponent's champion. If that champion is destroyed, then you may also heal a champion you control for three hit points. So what we do is we do three damage to her. That kills her because she only has four health. That means she's destroyed. And we heal ours for three hit points, so we are fully healed again. Um, and this one now is discarded to the discard pile of the controlling player. This one is just discarded as well. And you see here, star one. That means now this player here, across from me, has received one point. So we can also put like um, a die there to like say how many points we have, right? You would also put it like in the spell area down there where we have like the, the spell, the, the spell power. Why is that important? Well, the first player to receive 15 points wins the game. So first point gotten, also, the, the the player down here has actually lost the first hero, and then we would do the same thing again. We would we could be able we could play play uh, spells and champions and whatever, right? Um, also, we would have had to put that up there, and that's kind of how that works. Now, in the next turn, when it's this player's turn here again, so my turn, what I would now do is two things at the beginning of my turn. First of all, I would scoot that up here, and also these, um, these are fine. I will get my two. Sp Gain my two spell power as usual, right? This is also like where you put the die, like how many points you have accumulated so far. And then also we get a new territory because it's turn three, right? Remember, turn three, we get a new territory. That means now I can choose one of these and play, play it down here, for example, right? So now I have two territories. Now I can also play champions here. And this is how the game continues. And you continue until one of the players has 15 points. Um, and with that, the game would be won. So this is a rough overview of how to play the game. I hope that I kind of got the point across and you kind of understood how this works. But what do I think about the game? Well, let me tell you. First, keep in mind that this is a prototype and things will still change for the production copy. The cards will have a thicker stock, which I highly appreciate. Also, the game guide cards that you saw here uh, will be made a little bit nicer and cut a little bit nicer, right? In general, the components are quite good. I like that everything fits in the box, including the play mats here. So um, that is a really nice design choice. Also, the rules will be printed on a more narrow book so they actually fit in the box, right? Because at the moment, they don't. So it's a really nice little package. I like this. Let's talk about the gameplay now. If you know TCG, so uh, trading card games, territory will feel familiar from the way the cards are structured visually all the way to the gameplay. Still, territory has some very unique and interesting concepts. The way you can't attack units, but only territories, and can use those units to defend is very cool touch. It's always something to do since you always have food and spell power. No good champions, play a spell. No good cards, spend spell power to get new cards, because that's one thing I didn't explain. During the game, you can also spend spell power to discard cards and draw new ones, so you can kind of cycle through your deck. This is pretty well done, and you can pull off some powerful moves here. There were times 
where it seemed like the player was doing really bad, but with gained food and spell power, they were able to recover quickly. A well-placed spell can get rid of a hero, another spell can poison another champion, and with enough food, a few champions you can play, and you can really quickly turn around a game like this. Very exciting, this is truly enjoyable. I like the spatial element of this. Not only does it matter in which lane you play a champion, that has been done before, but you also try to combine specific heroes and territories to make them stronger. For example, this one here gives another machine champion in the same territory to attack power, so this one would have would be even stronger, right? So this one makes this one stronger, right? So that is really, really interesting. Also, range plays quite an important role. The different factions definitely seem to play quite differently, which is nice. I could imagine this game becoming even bigger at some point as well. There's potential here. Building your own deck could be daunting, but imagine just sitting there with a friend and you have all the cards spread out and you just build your deck together. That does sound like fun if you're into that. And if not, well, you have pre-made deck lists, as I showed you, and they're done in such a way that you can always construct two of those. Yeah, it takes a while, but that's the point of the game, to spend time with it, get your notes, cards, learn to how you do use the system. If that sounds like fun to you, you might want to check out the campaign. You will find the link in the description while it's still live. If that doesn't sound fun, well, why don't you check out the Kickstarter campaign anyway? But this game then might not be quite your liking. All in all, I enjoy this game. The gameplay has some very clever elements and you often feel very powerful. There's a lot of potential for building interesting decks here. I'm just looking forward to exploring the game even more. Well, and that concludes my preview of Territory. I hope you enjoyed the video. As usual, I'm immensely grateful for your support, especially to my Patreon supporters, with a special shout out to Thagnor and Ryan Hall for their generous contributions at the highest tier. Your support means the world to me. If you enjoy my content, you can support me by watching, liking and commenting on my videos, subscribing to my channel, supporting me on Patreon and engaging with me and my amazing community on my Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video or on my Discord server. Take care everyone, stay safe and cheers.